coming up. See the whipped in that bull's butt? That's all about pounds. And these bulls, EPDs are way above average in the Charley industry. And it's that length of body that provides an extra stake or two or three that really makes an animal profitable. See how one family in Montana set the standard in Charley genetics, next on The American Rancher. Welcome to the American Rancher. I'm Pam Minnick. Charley cattle are well known for growth and feedlot performance, especially in a crossbreeding program. Every year, the DeBrecker family in Dutton, Montana, works to improve their herd of peak performing Charley seed stock. And then the next year, they work to exceed what they accomplished the year before. This devotion to excellence has been the pattern of life for the DeBruckers since 1958. And today, their genetics rank in the top percentage of the Charley breed. My mom and dad, Lloyd and Jane, started the operation back in 1963. Uh, in 1958, they used some, a Charley bull on some commercial baldy cows they had. And they liked the calves so much, they decided they needed to get into the Charley business. So in 1963, they bought their first uh, half-blood heifers which back then you couldn't get purebred stock. And then they started breeding them up from there. My brother, Mark, came back to the operation in about 1978 or nine. And then Joe and Kathy, my brother-in-law and sister, came into the operation in about 1981 or two. And it's just been a family affair ever since with some more people joining in. And in particular, Kessler and Cutter Martin They've got their own Charlet cow herd and they've got their own commercial cow herd and they're really uh, stepping into the operation and trying to help, you know, market bulls and make the, make the Charlet cow herd better. Seems a little bit cliche, but family means everything to us. We're all pretty proud and happy with one another and we work hard together. And I think that uh, that's important in the beef industry and in the cattle industry and we all understand what it takes to work hard and, and try to get, get something done every day to try to make a better product for our customers. Mom and Dad set it up years ago that we would not be a corporation and that we would be individual entities. We've been very happy with those decisions because you know, we, we each have our own families and we're all trying to grow our operations, whether it's farming or ranching, and so we're responsible for our own bottom lines and our own financial situation. But when it comes to the Charlotte cow herd and selling bulls, we've all got the same goal in mind, and that is to make bulls that'll be as profitable as possible for our customers. I guess maybe the easiest way to put it for the Bricker Charlets is, you know, each family has their branch. I guess Brett has his, and Jackie has hers, and Mark, and Joe, and then us. Um, and then all the cattle need to, you know, they get graded and sorted and treated the same, so we all kind of have to raise good cattle from each of our individual ranches. So my mom is Kelly, uh, so I'd fit in as part of the family and one of the family operations. Um, my brother and I just run our operation um, about 20 miles north of where Brett and Mark are. We're grazing uh, the purebred cow herd and purebred heifers for ourselves, uh, grazing purebred bulls for the sale. So we brought our uh Registered bull pairs here, all oh, about two weeks ago. And Cass and I calved them their uh, February, March calves mainly. And then we take our heifer pairs at a pasture a few miles away from here. So Kessler, my brother and I, Kessler, run about 100 purebred Charlet, who, which we sell with the family in the annual April bull sale. The bull that we're using in this pasture is out of one of our good cows that uh, she's 12 now and she's raised three bulls that are being used in the uh, seed stock production. So we decided to keep her last son that was in the sale and he's done well for us the last few years and I think just uh, a lot of meat and they're uh, very growthy calves and that's why we use Charlet on our uh, commercial cows because they do well. Last year we weaned 
uh, 720 pound steer calves and for February, March, I guess that was, uh, we were happy with it. So yeah, this is the first time I've been in this pasture with Cutter. Uh, been up here on the front quite a bit, but I haven't been in this pasture before. Yeah, I guess it's cooler up here. A little shorter season, and uh, the last few years we have been getting a lot of timely rains and last year's cooler weather, and it stayed green pretty much the whole time the cattle were up here. A lot of years it can uh, doesn't look like this come August and September or uh, all of a sudden September it turns completely white. Two years ago, all of a sudden we had a September storm and there's four feet of snow and the cows are still up here, hauling them hay. This uh, native pasture it seems to uh, really pack a punch and the calves gain really well on it. Uh, I don't know if it they, seems like those introduced grasses, there's more of it, but a little wash here, they don't quite get the gain out of it. But I think that, that with this native, the calves seem to do well up here. You never get tired of this view though. The lady we were running from, her son was up here, and I think he said there was nine different bears he figured right around, you know, from, they're coming between Birch Creek over here and the North Fork of Sheep Creek. And I mean, last year we lost four cows to grizzlies. And uh, after a snowstorm last year, dad and my nephew took a little drive through here and like they had five different grizzly tracks between the yard and the Swift Dam Road that's just two miles over there. So how do you deal with the bears? I guess you just gotta coexist and hope they don't stay around too long and fishing game tries to do what they can but don't see them a lot but they're around and we definitely see the repercussions of them being here with the cattle. You got a little cycling going on down there by the reservoir. Oh yeah. That's the uh, brother of those two equity sons he bought from us. Oh really? Yeah. How does he look? He's definitely the smallest of the five, but uh, good he looks bull. good. He's a good bull. He's six now, I think. This would be our commercial herd that we breed to, to Brooker Charlotte bulls and we got about 230 up here that we summer. We brought them up last week, so about the first week of June and keep getting some rains and hopefully they'll be up here till middle October and that's when we'll wean these calves. Uh, last year our steer calves were just over 700 and our heifer calves were uh, 6, 675. Running this black baldy cow Bread Charlet is the cross that we like the best, but also do Angus Bread Charlet. And the calves are growthy, do well. Guys seem to like them, we like them. And I guess we're doing it this way because uh, hybrid vigor, uh, calves seem to come out, you know, light birth weights and they seem to just explode up here on this grass and come fall, they're just a good growthy calf and they go into the feed yards and guys like them because a little bigger, I guess more daily gain. And the reason we use them is because, I don't know, they're just a good, good cross on our baldy and black cows. After the break. We buy all our bulls from the Brucker Charlets. We've known them for 40 years. Two longtime De Brucker customers share their success stories with Charlet Genetics. That's after the break here on The American Rancher. Welcome back to the American Rancher. The DeBrecker family in Dutton, Montana has developed top-ranked Charlet genetics since 1958. Customers across America use DeBrecker Charlet in their crossbreeding program for more pounds on sale day. And to meet growing demand for those genetics, the DeBrecker family always has something to do that usually involves a lot of cattle.
So what we're doing today, we've uh, we AI'd and bred the heifers here a month ago. And so now we're going out to grass after having about a 35 day breeding season on these heifers. We believe uh, having a real short breeding window on our heifers, we're gonna keep the, uh, the fertile cows in the operation. And then along with that, uh, our cattle grade very well. We get a very high percentage of choice and even some primes and uh, they cross very well with other, other breeds. And we believe that fertility and that early maturity is what really helps with that quality grade at the packing house. And so we're shipping these heifers to grass today. Uh, the, the pasture's about 150 miles away, so we've got to go a ways for pasture, but uh, we're loading them on these trucks and, and gonna get them to, to grass so they can enjoy a nice green summer, hopefully. Okay, you guys each got pens. Let me tell you how many you're supposed to have on, and I'd like you to verify the count coming off. Okay, so we got 53 head, 55 head, 56, 59, 59, and 53. 335. They calve well, and then they just take off. Uh, you can see it at a young age. At a month or two old, those calves already have a larger frame. They're starting to get more meat into them already. And then uh, by summertime, they're just a real big calf. And then they'll wean off about 50 to 80 pounds bigger than their contemporary. So they cross really nice with a black or black baldy cow to give them some hybrid vigor that the feeders and packers all want. They make a nice gray calf. We're kind of a tan colored calf, but uh, I really think the Charlotte Bull makes that black cow better than she is. She weans off a bigger calf than she would bred to a black bull or a Hereford bull. And then the, we've had no shortage of feeders looking for our calves. Even my brother and I, we've sold the calves down to Iowa and Canada, and guys are always looking for them. You know, everyone wants a Charlotte Cross feeder calf. We hear reports back from different feedlots that not only we feed at, but people that buy our customers' calves feed at. You know, our crossbred calves out of our bulls, you know, they just gain like crazy. Our Charlotte sired calves are 50 pounds are even a little more heavier than our straight black calves. I guess calving wise, you know, we don't have any issues with size or, we like that out of these big baldy cows. I mean, 85, 90 pound calves are pretty consistent. You know, that may seem big to some people, but they're shaped right. They've got really good small heads, smooth shaped shoulders, length of body. And, uh, you know, it's just extremely rare that we, ha we get a, call about some calving issue. As in everything, just like your pickup and your car and your, your house, you know, we've gotten a lot better through the years. In the last 50 years, these Charlet have changed and uh, they calve like crazy. And these bigger calves in this cold weather, you know, February storms, they handled it so much better than these, those 50, 60 pound Angus calves handled it that uh, we're out of our heifers this year. We've probably gained 50 pounds in our weights, and we've had some of them on test. They've graded real well. I think we won a couple performance testing contests in Denver and things. Robert Wellman has been farming and ranching in Western Montana for 50 years, and he's been running DeBrucker Charlet Bulls for nearly that long. We run about 2,000 mother cows. Majority of them are black Angus cows. Charlet bulls on them. We've tried other breeds previously, but we've been pretty much Charlet cross calves for the last 30, 40 years. We buy all our bulls from the Brucker Charlets. We've known them for 40 years. Started out with Lloyd when he was younger and I was a lot younger. At one time we were calving early and as you get older, you don't want to get up four times at night and work your butt off. So we started moving our calving date back 
into the late spring and uh, we're seeing that we're not losing that much weight off our calves but we're making up for it with having a lot more live calves on the ground without going through all that labor that you can't find anymore. Our typical weaning weight is around 580 pounds. They just do it on grass. We don't subsidize them at all. We feed hay and cake for about four months out of the year and that's it. The rest of the time they're out on native pasture. We started doing business with the Berkshire Lays, I believe it was in the mid 1980s. My dad at the time was hauling out of the feedlot and Brett DeBrucker's dad, Lloyd, was running the feedlot at the time. So dad said, well, I gotta leave and go to the bull sale. And Lloyd said, well, I got some bulls back here. So he turned around, dad went back there and took a look and we bought the first bull and he didn't think he did a whole lot. He kind of ran around for about a month and then kind of laid down. Dad thought, well, something's kind of wrong. When it came to calving time, he bred three quarters of the herd. Uh, Cowherd's just mainly Black Angus, crossed with the DeBrucker Charlet bulls. And we like them because they get the vigor and they kind of, the two crosses, they kind of grow real good. They get a real nice bud on them. And they kind of, for what we want, just try to get as much pounds on as we can before we send them off to shipping. We like how it is. And then we like Charlie bulls because they, calves so much easier. For us, it seems like that way. And once they hit the ground, they're just like a black Angus. They just get right up and take off. And we're kind of liking how they always performed in all the years we've done it. Ah, uh, the Berkshire Charlie's been great people. They do great for doing service and a great family to do business with. And they've I'll do business with them for a long time. See the whip in that bull's butt? That's all about pounds. Next up on The American Rancher, see the DeBrucker breeding philosophy in action. Stay with us. Welcome back to The American Rancher. The DeBrucker family in Dutton, Montana, has developed top percentage Charlay genetics for over 60 years. With that much seed stock development experience to work from, the DeBruckers have honed in on a simple breeding philosophy that attracts an ever-growing customer base. Our breeding philosophy is centered around how we can assist our commercial producers. Uh, we want a calf that's shaped right so that uh, there's no calving difficulties. We want bred in performance so that when, the, when those calves hit the ground, they just take off and start growing right away with nothing but the mother's milk and, and a little bit of hay or grass. And uh, then at weaning time, you know, our, the calves out of our bulls are always 40 to 50 pounds heavier than, than out of other breeds and even out of other Charlet cattle. And then sometimes I've had reports of clear up to 100 or 120 pounds heavier under the exact same management. See the whip in that bull's butt? That's all about pounds. It's not about height of how tall he is because height doesn't have much to do with pounds, but width and volume does. They're pretty calving ease bulls, and, so, and they've got some very good maternal traits. So there will probably be people wanting to bid on this set of bulls for those traits, where we're more looking for just pounds in, the, in our operation. Also, we pick our bulls by EPDs, and these bulls' EPDs are way above average in the Charlet industry. We really like the length of body in our cattle, the quote-unquote money cuts. You got your prime rib and your ribeye steaks and that kind of thing. Those are the high-value cuts, and it's that length of body that, that uh, provides an extra steak or two or three that really makes an animal profitable. We've got bulls selling into operations that are a little smaller with, you know, 25 to 50 head. And we've also got bulls selling into operations that are 2,500 to 5,000 head. We run in areas that are very lush 
and we also run in areas that are high desert country that, that are very rough. And so they'll do the job because they're, they're built right and they just get out and go to work. The feed efficiency of, of DeBrucker's Charlet Genetics is really uh, top of the line. So, you know, in the feedlot, you can count on those calves out of our bulls to uh, not only gain more per day, but also gain more efficiently per day and, and have a lower cost to gain. Our annual bull sale is always the first Saturday in April. We'll sell about 600 to 700 bulls at that sale. And we hold it at Western Livestock Auction in Great Falls, Montana. And we'd love to see you there if you can make it. If not, I'd be happy to help you on the phone or you can bid over Superior Livestock Auction as well. So we'll assist you in any way we can. Join the DeBrucker family for their annual spring bull sale on Saturday, April 6th at the Western Livestock Auction in Great Falls, Montana. The sale will be on Superior if you can't make it in person. Log on to DeBruckerCharlet.com or SuperiorLivestock.com for more details. That's all the time we have today. To find out more about us, visit our website, TheAmericanRancher.com, or connect with us on Facebook. I'm Pam Minnick. For our entire American Rancher team, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.